Hello, everybody, and welcome to New Engineer on the Block. Today, we're going to be working on some simple wire EDM programming using Creo Parametric. Let's start out by selecting the working directory, and we'll make a new simple part. Hopefully, Creo doesn't spaz out too bad as it will while I'm also trying to record the screen. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to make this part with the z-axis pointing up, like most machine tools and most wire EDMs will have it. More details on that we can discuss in a future video. So I'll just sketch in my x -block plane. Yeah, quick circle. And we'll make that something reasonable, how about five inches in diameter. If anyone from PTC ever watches this, you guys can maybe make it not default to 226 or other outrageously large numbers. That would be cool. Extrude the sketch. Let's make it half an inch thick, just for the heck of it. And there we go. Here's our basic circle that we're going to wire EDM out. And actually, while we're here, let's make a hole. Excellent. Save that. Okay. And now we can get to the real part that all of you are here for, which is making the wire EDM do the thing. So this is a manufacturing assembly in Creo. And we start by assembling our reference model. If you wanted to, you could sketch and model the stuff right in the manufacturing assembly, but usually you have a part you've already made elsewhere you want to bring that in. So we're going to assemble that. I'm just going to choose the default constraint. OK. And it's going to confirm that I want to set the accuracy. Yeah, that's fine. OK. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hide all the assembly stuff just so I don't get it confused with the data that are on my part. Regenerate and save. All right. So you can see I've got my part coordinate system set up, and that's right in the center of the part. And so if I'm thinking about this, when I'm going to wire EDM a hole, I'm going to probably put my wire in here, touch off and find the center of this hole, because a lot of machines will either have a probing routine you can set up, or you can touch off three points and find center by hand. What I'll do now is I'll grab a work center, and I already have a user-defined work center that matches the EDM I'd actually make on this, so I'll just open that. And if I add a definition of that, Really, the only important thing that you need to know about it is the name of the post processor you intend to use. But that details on that are out of the scope of this video. One thing we do need to grab is a register table for this particular machine. It tells it what cutting parameters to use for each different pass. So I'll just retrieve my register table, then return. And if I open that register table, there we go. You can see it tells it what power settings and diameter settings to use for each pass. This part, we're probably just going to be making roughing passes, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you're making, say, a fancy gear and you want to make five finish passes, you want to make sure that your diameter settings and your generator or power settings are all lined up. So we'll close that. Done. We're going to make an operation which tells Creo that we're going to use the wire EDM and we're going to tell it which coordinate system we're using. There are lots of other features in here like clearance, which would define a retract plane if you're using a mill, fixture setup, but for us, these things we won't consider important, so we'll just cancel out of here. Yes, I really do want to cancel. So when we put our part in the wire EDM, it's going to sit like this with the X pointing towards our right and the Y pointing up away from us, and Z is the axis that moves up and down. So, I forgot to click OK. That would be why we don't have an operation there. OK. There we go. So now we have access to this wire EDM tab up here that we didn't have before. Over here, we'll go to a contour cut. And this is where we return to the 90s menus that Creo used to use back when it was, I presume, Pro E. So what we want to do is we're going to sequence that up. I want to give the sequence a name, the tool, and the parameters for it. Done. So I'm just going to call this one cut. 
the wire, this is the wire that I use on the machine, which is a 10 cell wire. Depending on what your machine is using, this may be 12 cell, 5 cell, what have you. Click OK. And PTC Credo defaults to just these few, which is really all we need. But if you want to, you can also do all the parameters and alphabetize them. And there is a ton of them. But for what we need here, we need to give it a cut feed value because even though the machine figures this out, Creo won't be happy without giving it a cut feed number. Uh, number of profiling passes is not important because we're just going to make one roughing cut. Register table. This is, in, this is important. So this has to be the same name as the register table that I pulled up earlier in the video. It does not need the file extension, but it does need the same name. All right, we're going to click OK. And now it's prompting us to tell us what to do. So we're going to, we could insert a whole bunch of things, but we're going to insert an automatic cut. And we're going to make a sketch to do that. Done. Drag the thing off to the side. And so now it's asking us what all we want to define. I don't care if the thread point, if it's the same as the start point, that's fine with me. I'm going to define the sketch. I want to define the material side, and we're only making a roughing. If I wanted to do a finish, I'd have to check that as well. Done. I'm going to set up a new sketch plane on this surface. And I want this plane to be the bottom. OK, fine. That's, that's good, too. Sometimes Creo likes to orient things weirdly. Alrighty. It's going to project. Uh, let's grab a chain. Yes, convert it to a circle. So I just projected the edges of that circle that we want to cut out. Bring that back in the normal view. So if you think about this, Odds are, I would probably have some sort of stock, like a rectangle size, sort of like this size of this construction box. It would also go up over here. We're going to cut a circle out of that. Definitely wouldn't want to cut a circle on a wire EDM. That's kind of an expensive way to do that. But for the sake of the illustration here, we'd probably be cutting it out of rectangular stock. So we're going to define it a point way over here to thread the wire. It's going to come in. Start cutting, cut around, and then leave a little tab so that the circle doesn't fall and hit our machine. That could cause some hazardous occurrences. So let me delete that rectangle real quick. And sure, let's delete half the circle too while we're at it. Get that back. There we go. So we're going to start off by making a line. I'm going to put this line down here. Bring it down a little ways and bring it out here. Reason being, in order to apply the cutter compensation, which is accounting for the diameter of a wire, the wire has to start out here and the next motion must be perpendicular. So you can't just run the line into the arc. You have to run it here, make a perpendicular straight line motion, and then start cutting an arc. Otherwise, the machine will bark at you and say, you're not doing it right. Alrighty. So next thing we need to do is we need to leave a little tab. So let's grab a point and just put it somewhere here and delete the segment that is between those two. So now you can see we have one continuous line that starts at this point, moves over, comes up, goes around most of the circle and stops right here. And right here the wire you would stop and cut the wire. So we'll make our tab pretty thin. Usually about 10 thou for something this small and light would be fine. And shorten that up to make it, whoops, let's try that point one. Shorten that up to make it shorter. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of extra cutting time. Make this 2.6. There we go. So this will start the wire just outside of our part. And now, because we want it to start here, we click the point, right click and hold, and there's a start point. So now it'll start here just like we wanted it to. Move our menus out of the way and click OK on the sketch. Now it's prompting me for the material side. And what that is is which side has the scrap, basically? Which side has the extra material? And so if we start over here and come into the part, 
and material is going to be on the left side. So just click left, done. And now it's checking to see if we want to do anything else. We're all done here, so we're going to do done cut. This box pops up. I never do anything with it. Click OK and click OK on this. So now from here, we can play the path we just made. Play path, screenplay, and a little play box comes up. You can see there's this very thin wire element. Slow it down a little ways and click play. You can see it started out here off the part, moves in, little angle, and then starts cutting around. It'll speed it up. And there we go. We're done. Close that and say done sequence. There we go. So now if we go over to operation, if you have a lot of different cutting sequences, you can do the operation and this little play path button. Play the path for the entire operation. Ta-da! And close. We're going to save this before I go too much further. And then now we can go to our manufacturing tab. And to post the code, you just save a CL file, which is the cutter location that Creo creates. I'm going to do it for my whole operation. Once you get over here and say path, you want to click file, the MCD file, and compute CL. Done. It'll prompt you for a place to put it. I'm just going to rename this so I don't get it lost with someone else's, my initials. Okay. And by clicking machine, it will use the post processor that was defined when we brought in the wire EDM work, cell, work center earlier in the video. Click done. And it'll prompt you for a program number. Uh, how about one, two, three, four? How about one, two, three, five? One, two, three, four. All right. Here's our tape length, cycle time. The cycle time is going to be a little bit inaccurate because our feed rate was defined in Creo as one inch a minute. YRDM is probably going to cut it a lot slower than that. Close that. And I will say done output. So now I come over here. Grab that out of the folder I put it in. I can open up the tap file, which is the tape file for a machine. And here's our operation. Close your code. You can see here it puts on the cutter compensation. Down here it does its movements, and then it starts working on the circle. And then finally it unloads the wire once it's done. So there we go. We have just successfully programmed one very, very expensive REM circle. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys would like to see more of this type of content with CNC programming and getting into some of the nitty gritty of how to set up the post processors and machines, let me know in the comments below. See y'all later.